uh, you can introduce them and, and so on. Okay, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to John, uh, Beth, whoever's going first. Okay, yes, uh, I'm John Henderson, and uh, we're going to do this, uh, this workshop in, in two sections today. I'm going to start off and, and doing a, a, a general tour of the, the resource room upstairs uh, so that you'll know what's available here locally uh, that you may or may not be able to find online. And then Bev afterward will come back down and Beverly will, uh, will walk you through uh, uh, tracing of uh, Revolutionary War era ancestors. Now, uh, my experience, just to let you know where I'm coming from, it's uh, uh, my experiences with tracing relatively recent uh, American families. My, uh, all, of my, all of my lines, both paternal and maternal, uh, came to this country oh, from 1870 onwards. So we're relative newcomers, and that's my uh, expertise, such as it is, is tracing, uh, in particular, and my specific focus is uh, is the Irish. I've done a little bit of work with Polish, uh, a little bit of work down on Cape Ann with a, a Nordic community, but my specialty is, is the Irish, and uh, my, my experience was is that uh, when I was in college, I was living with my grandmother here in Auburn, and we used to sit and we used to chat. And I was doing uh, some, some of the genealogy. I grew up in a military family, so we were in Europe, and we were just literally all over the United States. So, uh, but we tried to get here to Auburn most summers, or any summer that we could. And so there was always this link with the family, even though we didn't get to see them very often. Uh, when we were in town during the summer, we visited pretty much everybody. Uh, and so when uh, my father retired and we uh, settled here in the Lewis Auburn area, I uh, got to see my, my grandmother uh, a lot more frequently and uh, had the opportunity to follow up on what, what I knew of the family. In the fourth grade, I had, had a homework assignment to find out something about my families. And my mother knew all about her, her Irish line. Uh, and it was easy to remember because they came from a place called Hare Island. And, and when you're in the fourth grade, the, the name Hare Island sounds kind of funny. Uh, and so I, I had that information when we ended up here. And so my, and my, my paternal grandmother was a genealogist as well. So I, I kind of caught the bug from her, I think. She dragged me to a family gathering or, or two on her side of the family. And so I started poking around. I found a really good text to, to educate myself with, and so I began, you know, as time and money and whatnot and location uh, presented the opportunity, I, I did some research and found myself uh, here in town and utilized the, this library fairly extensively to, to begin tracing the, uh, my mother's Irish line here. And it turns out that one of the lines is, uh, is Murphy's. And of course, the, the Murphy's were lawyers. And they developed a line of law with regard to genealogy as well. For instance, uh, one of the laws is, is that the public ceremony in which your distinguished ancestor participated and at which the platform collapsed under him turned out to be a hanging. <laughs> You never asked your father about his family when he was alive because you were not interested in genealogy then. Your great-grandfather's newspaper obituary states that he died leaving no issue of record. Uh, the only record you find for your great-grandfather is that his property was sold at a sheriff's sale for insolvency. And the one document that would supply the missing link in your dead end has been lost due to fire, flood, or a war. <laughs> so, uh, so the Murphys. I followed the Murphys and, uh, and and got the genealogy. Genealogy, of course, is tracing uh, connections of, of uh, generations through birth, marriage, and death. Uh, and, and I got I accomplished that and wrote that up. Uh, when I landed here seven or eight years ago, uh, I then took
took the next step, and, and I had time on my hands, so I figured I would take the next step and uh, and fill out their lives with a little more than just the very basic information and, and connections that I had established uh, with my grandmother. And using the records up in the, the local resource room here uh, to, to a great extent. And, and so I, I composed six <coughs> biographies in, uh, of, of six of the individuals in that, uh, in that genealogy. And, and that was a really neat experience to, to really put some flesh on the bones. and Because uh, you can trace somebody around the city. Uh, you can find out where their houses were, what the houses looked like, were constructed of, and, and just all kinds of neat stuff uh, that where you could really begin to visualize who these people were. And those are some of the resources that I'll, I'll show you today. And uh, from those, it you know it keeps going further. As you know, one one solution leads to five more questions. And so I, as I was researching these people's lives here in the local area, I was picking up on the local history. And there hadn't been a whole lot written about the Irish in, in Lewiston and Auburn. There had been some work done in the uh, 1990s uh, when, a, when a book on the main Irish was, was published. There was a chapter on, on Lewiston. Uh, and uh, there had been a an article in the Maine Historical Society quarterly back in the 1970s, and, and then there were some scattered, you know, collections, smaller pieces written over over time by other people, very much like myself. Uh, there wasn't, there was no comprehensive history of the Irish or or anything showing the extent uh, of the Irish community here in Lewis and Auburn because everybody knows this is a, a French town, right? Um, and, and it is to a, to a large degree, uh, but before the French were here, the Irish were the, the, the dominant uh, immigrant community. And uh, in, in 1850, uh, as Lewiston was just getting ready to, uh, to begin building its mills and canals, uh, Lewiston was actually the most Irish of any town or city in Maine at almost, uh, at almost 25%. Uh, so, so there was a, so I, I've worked on the community history as well. And so what I, I guess what I'll say, I'm gonna ask you all a bunch of questions here in a moment, but, but I guess what I'll say is, is that, you know, my experience of doing genealogy is, uh, it's very much also about history. Uh, you know, the, the dates and places are, are fine and they're interesting, but things don't start getting in really interesting uh, until you put those, uh, those dates and places in context and know the location and know something about the, the fuller life of, of individuals. Um, so that's where, where I'm coming from today. Uh, you know, having done the genealogy, done some personal biography, and also having done the, the contextual research of the ethnic community that, that my particular family uh, grew up in and was a part of. So my questions for you. This is a hard, genealogy is a hard topic to talk about because <coughs> you never know how experienced your audience is and what you need to talk about and what you don't need to talk about. Uh, so how many of you have used uh, local city directories in your work so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And how about City reports. One, two, okay. We'll look at that really closely then. How about maps? How about war records lists? How about professional directories, like directories of doctors, directories of lawyers, and that sort of thing? Oh, okay. Okay, well, with that then, that gives me some idea of what we need to spend more time on and less time on. Uh, we'll go upstairs. The local history room is on the third floor, and so we'll troop up there and take a look.
Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, 